I got this blur shot from Scarlet Moon Creations and I'm back. This is my uh, mid-June wrap up where I talk about the first half of the books I read for the amazing readathon. This is gonna be a wrap up slash vlog in this recent reads. We'll see how it goes. I'll edit out some words depending on how it goes. I am filming this on the 12th of June, so not quite halfway through. Um, I didn't intend on vlogging, and then I was like, maybe I should, but then I'm like, I probably shouldn't because I know how I do with the vlogs. I'm already behind on my recent reads. At this point, I need to get up maids. Um, so yeah, but I do have some B-roll footage from what I was doing for like uh, half a week, which had nothing to do with the readathon. So it is what it is. I decided on May 31st that I was going to join the Amazing Readathon. I had seen a couple of discussions about it and I was having a high I've never done, I hadn't done it last year which I think was the first time um, and it's by Four Paws in a book so check out Bree's channel and all of that stuff it's a readathon based on the amazing race which I believe is originally an American TV show could be wrong but I haven't watched it in a while it's a reality show um, based on traveling and one I enjoyed even though I don't watch it anymore so I was like let's see I haven't done a readathon this year since January I enjoy them but they take a lot of work and I've only read 25 books at this time <laughs> and it's June that's a little weird for me but not the end of the world so let's talk about some books i decided to join i'm putting on hydrocortisone cream because i have a bit up while i was outside just now um i joined team romance because heather's uh videos about it is the first thing i saw so and i kind of really want to read some more romance that being said i have a bunch of books out from the library that are not romance that I need to read. Um, some for read along and others because I do want to read them but I've had them out and things need to, to, to be going along. Ooh, I don't have any reading clips to show you from the first week and <sighs> my thoughts but I can tell you those now. So this mainly takes place in Discord like you gotta join the Google Forms and you get points for your team. Like my strategy is to do my cities as best as I can. Um, and if I can do sightseeing, those will be where the romance comes in. Um, you get X bonus points if you read books. Um, for your team genre and you get bonus points if you read books by LGBTQIA plus authors who are out and comfortable saying so. So we're not outing anybody. Um, that being said, the first prompt, the first city was Toronto and the prompt was to read a book that you did not purchase. Since I primarily use the library, that worked wonderfully. Now I finished for that prompt, City of Dragons by Robin Hobb, the third book in the realm, um, in the realm, in the Rain Wild Chronicles. This is part of a read-along I'm doing uh, with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany, Chris from Chris T and Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and we do live shows every month about these so we've done 
yeah we got one more Rainwall chronicle book to read after this and oh i enjoyed it i gave it four stars i listened to the audiobook and it went relatively quickly i think i finished it in two days yes in two days so the live show for this uh was june 5th i believe and so i was like i need to And it's this. Robin Hobbs books tend to be long, but this particular quartet of books are the shortest ones. So this was only about 14 hours, the audiobook, and it was good pacing. So I got through it in two days. That was that was pretty cool. Um since this is kind of vloggy, I started out on the first, um, signing up for everything on the Amazing Readers on uh, Discord, and I only half knew how this was going to work. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, downloading what I needed to and picking out my book, I in the morning um, of the first. I went to the park, my little park, Concrete Plant Park, which has a foodway. I thought there would be some um, stewardship that morning, but there wasn't, and so I forwards, I forwards, I don't have any footage of this because the one time I was like, I'm not going to film that. Um, lots of elder flowers, they were blooming, and June berries, which were starting to get ripe, and some plantain, which I need right now um cat mints and mugwort which i'm thinking about making into plant wands but it might be too late we shall see um and like i have this on two times speed via audio and since we were not stewarding anything uh, there weren't really other people to talk to, so I could just concentrate on the foraging and listening. And three hours plus the travel time to get there and come back, it's only about half an hour. I wait for the bus and whatnot. Um, so that got me through six hours. I listened to a little bit more while I was prepping some uh, products for the retreat I'm going to later in the week um so what i'm trying to do is get shit done because i'm going to be away from thursday to sunday sunday night so monday i will probably be sleeping half the day i had to do a quick meeting <laughs> i forgot um so then I went to the Bronx Night Market, which is uh, one of a couple of night markets that are happening in New York City. This is, I think, the, Saturday, or the first Saturday of every month. I don't remember. Um, so happening here in the Bronx. I definitely wanted to go to this if I wasn't going um, to be hanging out with friends at the winery this weekend because uh, the previous weekend I went to Luna Fair in New Jersey, which is more of a pagan -y, New Agey type of event. And there was this uh, vendor, I'll put the name on the screen because I forget off the top of my head, that sells like infused gummies and uh, alcohol infused but also other adult uh legal infusions i had some last at the luna fair and i enjoyed them and they're a reasonable price i had seen them before probably at the bronx night market because we talked for a second i was like guys seem familiar but i hadn't bought and so far this year i had not been to the bronx night market so i went and enjoyed myself. I also had some dumplings which were delicious. And then I came back home, um, putting my clothes away, listened to some more of 
the audiobook, City of Dragons, and things were not quite going how I expected. So, that was the first book. Uh, what was it about? <laughs> what is it about? City of Dragons is book three, in, like I said, in the Rainbow Chronicles, which is the fourth series in Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderlane series. So, I can't say a lot about what happened in this book without spoiling a hell of a lot of things. Just know dragons are involved um, in this uh, fantasy world. Uh, there are these traitor cities called Bingtown and Rainwild. And they seem to be kind of like across a river from each other, not directly, but relatively. And Bing Town is a little bit more advanced because rain wilds are more wild. And both of these towns were kind of established by traders, people who um, spend money to make money uh, because they have found dragon artifacts and elderling artifacts and I can't tell you what an elderling is because we're still figuring that out but uh, they're kind of human like but have some connection with the dragons now uh, at the start of the Rainwall Chronicles we're at this turning point where dragons are coming back to the world and uh but not quite as dragons and we see them struggling to get to the rain wilds and then to evolve there until the people of the rain wilds are like we don't want to have anything to do with them anymore let's send them off to find their secret ancient city Kelsingra and the dragons are like yeah sure we'll go and uh, send us a couple of hunters with us so we'll make sure we'll get there and the story goes from there. There's a lot of people from the uh, Live Ship Traders series uh, trilogy that was like two series before this. Um, they kind of pop up here which was a surprise um, and a lot more points of view than we had before. Like, we sacrificed some points of view while getting these new ones that are from previous series. So, but it was, like, nice to, for the most part, <laughs> see where everybody is at. Um, with those new points of view, though, like, they open up new avenues or paths for how this quartet can end. There's one more book in the Rainwall Chronicles that we'll be reading next month, um, or this month. And, um, I'm very interested to see how that's gonna go. I gave this four stars, though. Uh, it, there, there was a lot. There was a lot. There was a character that I absolutely hate that I'm so glad he got the shit beat out of him. I'm gonna end it on that note. Some confrontations I was expecting did not occur because things went differently. Choices were made that hadn't occurred to me and could be made and I was like, okay, let's move. And uh, some other stuff, I'm just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. So with the let's book being the last one, like definitely conf con things will come to an head. It has to, they have to, they have to. Um, the other thing I guess I want to talk about is the retreat. So I have a retreat. Um, it's only the weekend, but I'm going up a day early for reasons. And, um, so Thursday through Saturday, I will be away. I don't expect to have much service because I almost never do. I uh, will take a physical book with me. And uh, my tablet just to not be on my phone the whole time. But yeah. 
I'm going to do a sightseeing book now. I can't believe I have the time to do so. Uh, at least that was my thought then. So, looking at my options. I don't know. I didn't look at these. I didn't prepare. <laughs> yeah, I decided, like I said, at the last minute to do this, so... I haven't finished the Parasol Protectorate. I think I'm up to book three. That's a one word in the title. Oh, wait a minute. I have definitely read this book. Book three in the Parasol. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, so, 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 so. I've read book three. Which means I'm up to book four. Reading book four. Where is it? Reading the fourth book in a series is 500 points. Let's go. That's going to be my sightseeing prompts. Oh. Oh. Alright, so it's Monday. Uh. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, it's not that I've read absolutely nothing. It's just that I've been busy preparing for this retreat. Uh, which I haven't explained. It's not really related to this video. That's probably why and I've been busy. The Morgan's Call retreat um, I've never been to before. But uh, several of my friends have. And I've been wanting to go. And I paid for it. It's also a camping retreat as well. So this is a spiritual retreat. Uh, the focus on the Morrigan, you know, from Celtic and Irish myth and uh, paganistic, uh, modern paganistic practices, sp spiritual um, practices. So not a deity I am a follower of or I should say a de devotee of or someone that I've worked with but there is a connection with uh, my witchcraft tradition and so I'd like to learn more but also uh, experience more from those who have already I'm interested also this will be my first like real camping uh, outside, sleeping bag, in a tent type thing. I got, uh, I borrowed a sleeping bag and a mat from friends who are like super outdoorsy. I considered buying, but I didn't because I have nowhere to put them. Deadass. So that is a purchase for later once I offload some things I already have. If I see myself camping more often, the uh, I also found out last week that I will be vending as well, which I didn't quite know. Like it was mentioned as a possibility, but I don't think I it was confirmed. I didn't apply. I'm sharing a vending space with friends, so I didn't apply. Someone else did. Uh, that being said, I needed to decide and make some stuff. We have, there's going to be a theme of land, sea, and sky. And while I could make brand new products, I thought just make it easier on myself and use stuff I already have. So I've made a summer solstice incense, which would be for sky, um, incense, and uh, I've made a summer solstice oil, which for earth, the oil and all of the ingredients in it come from the land. And lastly, a Gemini bath soak. It's Gemini season now and bath for a seed. Um, 
So pulling those together, mixing, making them, putting them in the packaging is what I've been doing. Earlier today, I ran out to Staples to get extra labels printed, which are relatively cheap. And thankfully, it was very quick. My timing was wonderful, so I could just go up to the counter and they printed it right away and handed it back to me. And I spent less than $3. But, uh, so I had to spend some time... Um, not designing so much as like copy pasting um, the designs I already had into the format to print and then go down to 125th Street to have them printed and come back. Um, I also ordered some more essential oils uh, from a new source but a friendly person who I will be seeing at the retreat yeah. tomorrow I'm meeting with my friend who's gonna pick up the big items that I'll have because uh, I'm taking the train up ha um, halfway and they're gonna pick me up and we'll drive the rest of the way into Connecticut not bad uh, the train ride is about an hour and a half I just have to wake up at 5 a.m. my <laughs> uh, on Thursday morning my niece will be here that night and I have a live show for City of Dragons the live show for City of Dragons uh, yes I'll put a link in the description because it would have happened by the time you see this so as far as my reading goes um, I did start Heartless Yes. Uh, this this morning, and it's a little ridiculous. But I just I don't have the the focus because I'm like I need to get everything together for this retreat. Also, I had forged all of these things on the first, and I'm like I need to do something with them. Otherwise, they will all be dry or dead by the time I come back Sunday night, which would have defeated the purpose the main thing being making elder flower cordial so yeah yeah anyway um i started heartless but we got our next city drop that's what it was <laughs> i'm all over the place because that's 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 how i be and uh apparently it was during sprints because that's how we do. Oh, I didn't mention, but I did do the Toronto detour, which was to post a picture of your current read with your pet. I don't have a pet. I'm allergic to dogs and cats, and I ain't got space for like a fish or anything else. Um, so the other option was like with a plant or a stuffed animal. I'm not a stuffed animal person, so I have none. Uh, I have a lot of plants, so I took one with my aloe, or oh, I should put it over here, my aloe plant, one of the many, um, and that was, you know, when I was, that was, uh, on the second, uh, yesterday, so, yes, and I was finishing up, uh, City of Dragons, so, yay. We've just had leg two drop. When I was like, okay, this evening I'll cozy up with Heartless as a sightseeing prompt. But yeah, so leg two is um, Buenos Aires and two for Tango. So a book with two point of views, which works for this. I don't, I'm not even going to attempt to look for anything else. What well, souls are made of has exactly two points of view. It's the retelling of the Wuthering Heights, as I mentioned, and um, the chapters are titled by whose point of view we're in, Catherine or Heathcliff. I'll get to this. I can say that it is better than Wuthering Heights, which I thought was a crock of shit. <laughs> Not bad writing, but why this story? These. Everybody was aggravating. 
but we kind of we're, we're I think getting like the because the thing is that is not from the point of view of the two main characters like we're hearing third hand from somebody who's like a servant but in all their business first outside of his control and now because she wants to be but I'm not gonna get into it because there will be like spoilery vlog for this and Wuthering Heights um as I've been doing for my remix classics read a lot but yeah so Catherine and Heathcliff POVs and yeah we're gonna we're gonna keep keep this going um this is really short so I hope to finish it before Thursday um it's only 287 pages like I said I'm 24 pages in so If I can finish this before we go, like, at least that will be done. That will be done. And then, I don't know what I would bring with me physically. Uh, but yeah, I'm also still listening to the Morgan Celtic Goddess of Magic and Might uh, by Courtney Weber every morning um, in prep for the retreat. I need to start packing my clothes though. I wish I had another audiobook. I don't know why I didn't think to look for an audiobook. So yeah. Let's go. Okay, very quickly. <laughs> As I showed you uh, setting up for the retreat, I will tell you guys, I didn't get much further with uh, the books. Um... I made it to about 25% of the Morrigan Celtic Goddess of Magic and Might and to only 34% of uh, What Souls Are Made Of, the second book. So uh, I read another 42 pages to page 99 of that and it's unfortunate. Because, yeah, yeah. I was also trying out some uh, new tarot spreads and readings for to offer at the retreat. I do Reiki and uh, card readings as well, so uh, services as well as products to be offered. I was looking at the schedule as well as to try to figure out what I wanted to see and what time of day I wanted to bend. But yeah, we got here, we picked out our spot and started setting up the tent, which was a teepee. And you, you can see, like, we have a little picnic table inside. We set up the two cots, uh, the, and um, while well, my other friend went to start up working the event and it was a beautiful weekend great rituals great workshops I did a lot of crafty things um, and I didn't sell anything but I don't know that my brain was properly there for that um, the rituals were amazing it was really great to meet up with people I have met before I also meeting new people was amazing as well um, hearing about different people's experiences with the Morrigan was cool so yeah um, at the end of the retreat we passed everything up and they drove me all the way back to New York City we stopped in New Rochelle for dinner and yeah, made it back home. And um, this might be TMI, but promptly that Monday I was feeling exhausted, so I slept. And then Tuesday I woke up and it was that time of the month. So I was like, why am I so tired? This is why. So yeah. 
I, I didn't get any of the reading I needed to in. It's funny. It's just not what I expected, necessarily. Like, do not go into this book expecting ashes in the sun. <laughs> it's not that. So, anyways, uh, I gotta go to work. I also have to cause some chaos. So, um, yeah. I have to go drop a new game piece into the Discord. So I'm gonna go do that. Okay, bye. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday afternoon. I am on chapter six of this, which, like, doesn't sound like a lot, but I promise you, it's like halfway. 197 pages in. I think I hate this book. The next book I finished. Month. Uh. What Souls Are Made Of by Tasha Suri. Yes, I'm in the same spot as I was in my blog. I guess I could also mention that I finished, aka DNF, uh. Wuthering Heights. I don't remember when, if that was May or June, so I'll just mention that briefly here. But yeah, this was the fourth book in my Remix Classics read-along, and I have a very specific blog for this, a reading blog, so go check that out. I also have one for Wuthering Heights, um, which is, this is remixing. Uh, Tasha Suri is also the author of the Jasmine Throne and Empire of Sand duology, I forget the name of it. So. If you don't know what Wuthering Heights is about and what this is about, I'm not going to go into too much depth because I'm reading vlogs for them. But we're following Heathcliff and Catherine who are thrown together in a family. Heathcliff is an outsider. He is of uh, Indian descent and Catherine's father brings him home one day out of we don't know what because he's found on the streets of Liverpool I think um, he and Catherine become fast friends as two wild childs on the moors in um, Yorkshire but Catherine and uh, her family want better for her and uh, when they reach the age of 12 Catherine starts seeing what money for her life and she their friendship goes apart even though they still definitely have feelings for each other Catherine decides she wants to marry a local boy who is from a um, family of wealth Heathcliff overhearing that decides he's gonna run away he's done with this family um, which is abusive and this town which treats him like he's less than a servant like he's just other and we're following the two of them and their point of views from that point forward this is a YA retelling like I said of Wuthering Heights a lot less painful in my personal opinion um I wound up only giving it three stars if you want to hear more check out the reading vlog the next book I finished actually Oh, I can't really show you, so I'll put it over my boobs here. Is the Morgan, and I listened to this on audiobook via Hoopla. I had I've heard of the Morgan. I know some general gist of her myth, but I didn't want to go to the retreat like completely ignorance or I wanted more information. Morgan Daimler, the author, is well known as well respected uh, for her research and um, when I saw that several of her books, including this one, were on Hoopla to listen to, I was like, oh great. Uh, but I got a lot of the myths and I appreciated this. What, what should I say? What should I say? So this book um, it's section off, um, chapter wise so that you get, uh, the different aspects of the Morgan. So, shapeshifter, uh, possibly fertility, goddess, goddess of war, etc. Uh, 
I like that along the way Morgan reminds us that you know different people have different ideas they're not one concrete way that is ultimately agreed on by every follower or devotee of um, all of these different aspects of the Morgan each chapter uh, delves into a different aspect of her um, they, she talks about Morgan uh, the author talks about how some see the Morgan as uh, the sisters so Bob five <sighs> Maka Morgan Morgu uh, touches on the men and uh, Danu as well as a couple of others but mostly it's five Maka Morgan and that's fine too she gives very Cliff Notes versions of several of the myths or legends or uh, the lore of the Morrigan and talks about sacred sites and things like that. Each chapter uh, when we're going into the different aspects we start off I guess with a general gist of modern and ancient ideas of that aspect and where they might have come from, how they might be seen today, and then she dips into an anecdote either of her own or, no, sorry, someone else's uh, particular experience. Since I was listening to the audiobook, I'm not sure if these like she she attributes these anecdotes to the people she mentions in in the audiobook but i'm not sure how it's put in physically in the book like it's quoted seems like it's quoted though uh, if i get my hands on a physical copy i don't know if you have then you can tell us uh then she goes into some things that you can do, whether it's a spell work or a prayer or an altar setup, offering, that kind of thing, and to working with that particular aspect if you so choose. Then another anecdote, but it's her personal experience, uh, which I appreciate. So I was bookmarking a lot of things. The last chapter, chapter 8, is all rituals and prayers, or I should say spells and prayers, which is nice. Um, things that don't necessarily fit in one aspect or another, and make sense because she does talk in the beginning about how, of that particular chapter about how um, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that you only work with one particular aspect of the Morrigan. It seems like a lot of people's experiences, even if they do attempt to do that, they, the other aspects do come in as well. So, you call on the shape sister, you get, you know, maybe the goddess of war or uh, fertility as well. Just as an example, off the top of my head. So, yeah, it's a physical copy, I think, would also give me any bibliography, which audiobook doesn't do. However, uh, I appreciate that. Hearing some uh, first-hand accounts of what people, Dave, Morgan Daimler, but also the other small snippets here and there, of what people have done, it, what have, people have experienced. Um, with the Morgan, and uh, for the purposes of the retreat, it gave me a good foundation of a lot of the myths and uh, legends and whatnot about the Morgan, the stories um, told about her, and 
the cast of characters that she interacts with. Uh, I'm saying this because I have just talking about a fiction book and it's really hard to switch um, the words I'm using to something that's slightly more academic in this nonfiction aspect, but also spiritual. So, yeah. Uh, I think I gave it four stars. Uh, it's, I think it's a really great beginner book for someone who would like to learn more about the Morgan. As far as audiobook-wise, I, I appreciate that she pronounces all of the Irish and or Gaelic names for things and then gives you the English one. However, I've never seen any of the Irish or Gaelic names, so it just went completely over my head. Um, definitely need a physical copy or to look up stuff to see, like, you know, how, what what word what the words look like that I'm hearing pronounced. So yeah. Um, at this point, it is Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and that means for the amazing readathon, we are we have already started Face Off Week. I wanted to update you at noon when it started, but I was busy, so life life's happening. Face Off Week, we switch from counting pages to counting how many books we can read in 48 hours from noon today to noon uh, Sunday, the 16th. And so, so the page count doesn't matter anymore, it behooves us to switch to um, shorter books. I am behind on my city, but my city books are longer, so... I'll come back to those. But I will mention the first Facebook book I've started already is um, Forever Wild, book 2.5 in uh, the Simply Wild series. This is a novella. In Simply Wild, we've got Kala, who is a city girl. Um, I think she's a lawyer. Or she works in a law firm. But she also is trying to be an influencer with her best friend. And she li she's uh, living in Toronto, but so is her mom and her stepdad, who she gets along with well. One day she gets a call from a friend of her biological father um, saying that, you know, he is really sick and she should come visit him in Alaska. And so she decides to go finally meet her dad, um, who she's, she hasn't seen since she was sick in the Alaskan wild. He is a bush pilot. Um, she goes out there and uh, she meets him and this is a whole different type of lifestyle that she's not used to. But while she's there, she also meets uh, someone, another bush pilot who works for him, Jonah, who is an asshole. Um, and he has thoughts about this city girl coming here. Um, he sees her dad as like a father figure as well. Um, and things go from there. I really enjoyed it. I forgot that, you know, I want to finish the series and I'm up to the novella. So I'm like, let's go. It is a Christmas <laughs> novella, which works because it is hot as hell here so i need those cool thoughts in my head um this will be their second christmas together um but the first one where they're a little bit more solid in their relationship um both of their parents are coming to visit them in their home and they're trying to figure out uh, about a wedding so, yeah, I am, it's 150 pages and I'm on page 53 already, so I'll come back with uh, my rating and the next book I'm going to read. Hey guys, just uh, wanted to, I think, close this out. That is the last book I will be talking about in this 
wrap up thing um we have two more weeks obviously of june and so the rest of the amazing readathon also the uh the graphics is beginning i think for the rest of the month and the last week of june tome topple is returning so i may or may not have things to say about those but like this video if you liked it subscribe if you're new hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming links in the description to everything i've talked about here including all of the books and links to my instagram and twitter goodreads and Storygraph accounts if you'd like to follow me or friend me in any of those There's also a 10% off discount code to my Etsy shop where I make all natural bath and body products for Magical and mundane purposes plus there is a link to my patreon account which has the grapefruit tier where I offer exclusive bookish content only but do check out the other tiers if you are interested and that is it for me today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.